So as the seventies went on, um, you know, in, in this kind of first first capital cost allowance um, uh, uh, era, you know, we really saw a lot of kind of grindhouse style films. Uh, you see Deranged, which Dave was talking about in his thing, and, and uh, there's a movie called Yeti Giant of the Twentieth Century, which is an atomic co-production about a Yeti who actually goes on the loose in Toronto, and uh, it's like you can see him in St. Paul, and uh, it, that's a really cool film. And if you like to see Toronto. Uh, in the 70s on, on, on a film. Uh, Rituals, Ilsa Tigers of Siberia, uh, all very kind of, uh, you know, trashy um, 70s style uh, films. Uh, Changeling, however, w which was made, I believe, in 1980 or 1981, was kind of, started to change things a little bit. It, it, it was a much more polished film um, than a lot of the stuff that you saw in the 70s, made by a more respected director, and uh, really, Kind of set a little bit of tone of professionalism as as things kind of moved into the 80s, um, and uh, yeah, the tax shelters ended in 1981, and they uh, they were so badly abused they decided to revoke them entirely. In 1982, they reintroduced them as 50 percent, so you were getting half your money um, written off. So it, this kind of slowed production a little bit. Um, 70s was we were actually in Canada was actually out producing Hollywood. We were making so many films in the 70s. Uh, this, this definitely cut it back, um, and like I said, the film started to get a little bit more polished. But as you, as you can see, really, you know, the 80s were just completely dominated by slashers. That, that kind of, until 80, you know, until 87, 88, most of what we were making. And, and really, those are the films today that really live on and really have a lot of fans. Prom Night, Terror Train, My Bloody Valentine, Happy Birthday to Me. Um, even, you know, ki Killer Party, Curtains, all very well, uh, like by, by fans and, and, and known the world over, as these films were getting uh, distribution from the big studios. Um, one of the other really curious things that was happening at this time was there was this kind of mini boom of giant monster movies, uh, and mostly giant rat movies. So Deadly Eyes was uh, uh, about is about uh, rats. It's actually dogs dressed as rats running around Toronto against the TTC and everything. Um, of Unknown Origin has Peter Weller battling a rat in his house um, and he basically destroys his whole home. Spasms, I, I mentioned before. Food of the Gods Part 2 is about rats that eat, eat a gross serum and, and grow in huge sizes and attack a synchronized swimming team. Um, it's, a lot, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, attack Shelter ended in about 1988 um, and this pretty much completely ended uh, genre cinema in Canada. Um, there was just no financial incentive for, for people to, uh, to really put their neck out and make films. So, uh, and, and really the, the new wave uh, was part of that. that it, this new generation of filmmakers was coming up. Um, Adam McGoyan, Bruce McDonald, Donna Keller, uh, Patricia Rosema. Uh, these, were the, these were the kind of pegged as the new hope of Canadian cinema. Um, a chance to move away from more of the genre works that we had seen in the past. Um, also around this time, Telefilm. Uh, the CFTC was renamed Telefilm Canada, and they kind of switched their mandate to more television um, than film, uh, although they did they still didn't sell film. So uh, as a result, 1988 is like a huge year uh, because it was the last year that the tax shelter, that the tax shelter were, were there. So a lot, if you, if you look at it, it's a it's Canadian horror film, and it almost certainly came out in 87 or 88 because it was just this huge glut of everybody trying to get it out or, um, or they, could, they would lose their tax break. Um, so a lot of it was straight to video stuff. Um, sequels. So it, you know, they, they wanted to they wanted to refuse popular, you know, um, uh, well known uh, um, uh, franchises already, and uh, it's some really terrible. You know, straight to video. You know, Gate Two is just an you know, like. You know, I like the gate, but the gate too is almost impossible. You know, Fun Night 4, Scanner Cop, uh, it's just not good films. Um, but the other kind of fun thing that was happening, like I said, at 87, 88, all these, all these kind of straight-to-video films, um, you kind of had these, these kind of self-funded vanity projects by these filmmakers who really loved horror. And, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't about, for them it wasn't about the tax break. It was, them, it was their chance to actually finally make a, a horror film that they loved so much. And for me, this is kind of one of the most interesting periods of Canadian horror. You know, it's, it's like guys in their basement who are making movies and really just want to get them out. 
Um, and you know, we're st we're still even uncovering new films in this kind of area. There were so many. Science Craze, I guess, is one of the is one of the latest ones that uh, people have been picking up on the last couple of years. Nobody really knew about it four or five years ago. Uh, it's just a really really terrible film, but it's kind of fascinating in how kind of amateurishly it's made. Um, things, of course, uh, is a personal favorite too. Um, and then. What really, ha what really changed things after this kind of uh, very, very lean period of, of bad straight-to-video stuff was Ginger Snaps, um, and that really single-handedly brought horror back into the spotlight. It proved to everyone that Canadian horror once again could make money. Um, it was the critics really, uh, really liked it, um, and it just kind of, you know, it, it legitimized horror again. It made it, it made it acceptable to make horror films in Canada. Um, since then, we really have seen a bit of a resurgence um, in Canadian horror that's kind of, I, I think, reaching a bit of a, a, a frenzy these days. It, it seems uh, there's a, all kinds of uh, activity um, around Canadian horror uh, just in the last couple of years. So some of the different kinds of films that, you know, uh, you see Yeti up there, the, the Sci-Fi Channel uh, makes a lot of these monster movies, and they shoot them all in uh, Vancouver. So there's kind of this mini boom of uh, Vancouver shot uh, monster movies made by uh, Canadian directors out there. Most of them are not very good, but it's definitely, you know, they're making three, four a year out there. Um, Decoys was kind of a, as, as Ginger Snaps had a couple sequels, Decoys came out as kind of a sci-fi imitator, uh, also trying to aim at a, creating a franchise. Um, you know, and then we've seen, you know, Fido and, uh, uh, you know, Pawnee Pool, as I mentioned, and Splice kind of bringing back the Cronenberg and, um, you know, uh, themes of the 70s, and, and obviously antiviral Brandon Cronenberg. Um, we're seeing that yet again. Um, and of course, the, the Grindhouse uh, influence, um, Smash Cut, uh, Lee DeMar's movie, who also made Jesus Christ Vampire Hunter. Um, and of course, we're seeing, you know, Astron 6 coming out, and, uh, uh, and I guess the other the other interesting thing is we're also seeing uh, films from all across Canada now. It used to be primarily Montreal, Toronto, and you know uh, Father's Day is from uh, is was made in Winnipeg. Uh, There's a film uh, last year at Fantasia called The Corridor from Nova Scotia. Uh, obviously, Hobo from Nova Scotia. We're really seeing um, kind of all across Canada now. Everyone's trying to get in on the act. Actually, somebody sent me a horror film from. Uh, New Brunswick the other day, in, independently made, but I don't think I don't think there's ever been a horror movie ever made in New Brunswick. So it's it's uh, it's interesting to see. It's kind of a there's a bit of a, a whole buzz of, uh, definitely going on right now. Um, and really, if, if if you guys are interested in in the history of Canadian horror cinema and a little bit more about what I was talking about, I would really recommend Kalen's book that came from within. It really is the definitive look at uh, Canadian horror cinema. That is my presentation.